welcome to Little Learners. In today's video, we're going to be looking at assessments in the early years. This video is sponsored by our friends at Child Pass, and we'll be hearing more about them later in the video. Before we get started, don't forget if you find this video helpful or interesting to give it a thumbs up as it really helps out the channel. And if you want to see more videos like this, click the subscribe button. So assessments in the early years. There are three statutory assessments that we have to carry out in the early years. These are the two year check, the reception baseline assessment and the early years foundation stage profile. So the two year check is pretty much what it says on the tin. Any child who is in an early years setting when they are two or really between the ages of two and three will have a two year check carried out. This is really a report about their development and if they're at the expected level or not for their age. The check is shared with parents so that they know how their child is doing as well. Parental engagement is really important. I made another video about that. And so for the two year check to get a really good overall idea of how the child's doing, it's important that the practitioner and the parents work together. Then we move on to the reception baseline assessment. This is carried out when children start reception, so they will be four or five years old. The government provides a selection of assessments that schools can choose from, and they have to carry that out at the beginning of reception. I think it's in the first six weeks, so that every child has gone through this baseline assessment. The idea of this assessment is to be able to track how schools are doing, really. So the children do the baseline assessment at the beginning of reception and then all the way through until the end of year six, when they do their SATs, the government can then use that data to see how the school is doing. Schools often will carry out their own baseline assessments so that they can get an idea of the child because the reception baseline assessment doesn't really always give them the best idea of how the child is doing but that is a separate matter for a separate video. So then we come to the end of the reception year and we have the EYFS profile. This is a report again kind of like the two-year check but a bit more in depth a lot of the time about how a child is developing and we have to give the child a kind of grade against each area of learning. These grades are called judgments. These judgments will be either expected, so they're at the expected level of development in that area of learning, or emerging, which means that they aren't quite at the expected level yet. We used to have a judgment called exceeding, which meant that they were exceeding the expected level. We don't have that judgment anymore, but I thought I would mention it in case someone was watching this video thinking, hey, what happened to the exceeding judgment? So those are the three statutory assessments. They have to happen. So the first one doesn't happen until a child is at least two years old. And then the final two happen in the reception year. Now, when it comes to assessing, we of course can't just use one assessment at age two and two assessments in the reception year. We need to be assessing children all the time. And this kind of assessment that I'm talking about now is formative assessment. Rather than giving us a summary, it's an ongoing assessment. And to do that in the early years, we use observations. We are always observing children looking at how their development is going, looking at what their targets and next steps might be, noticing when children have gained a new skill. Observations are done just throughout the day. Practitioners will be working alongside a child, playing with a child, or stepping back and watching what a child's doing. Part of observing as a practitioner in the early years is really knowing when to stand back and not interact with the child to let them get on with what they're doing and to really observe their development. And then also when to step in and when to work with the child and when to play with the child to then help them to develop their skills further. We used to have to record all of our observations, which was very, very difficult because of course there were a lot of observations. When I started teaching, we did everything on paper, which was a lot. And it really took practitioners away from the children because there was so much paperwork to do. While I was teaching, I found out about observation systems and we started using one of those. And now I know all about child paths. If you've seen some of my previous videos with child paths, you'll know that they have so many functionalities within one platform. So you can use just this one platform for everything you need for your early years setting. One of the functionalities that the child paths platform has is recording observations. 
The great thing about this is that there is so much detail to it. So if we look at this one of Cooper, you can see that I can add photos to this observation. I can select what kind of observation this was. I can also say whether it was child-led, child-initiated, adult-led, and then I can come to the description. Child paths have put in some prompts for you so that if a practitioner is writing this observation and they're not quite sure where to start, then this can be really helpful. Or you can get rid of those prompts altogether and just write whatever you want to write. You can decide whether or not you're going to share this progress with parents. And there is opportunity to write even more. So you can really add as much or as little as you decide. Childpaths also has the milestones functionality. The great thing about this is that once you've filled it out, if a child is doing well and maybe they've done three out of four, then that fourth one, you know, that is the child's target at the moment. But if a child is maybe only hitting one of those milestones and not the others, Child Pass will actually bring up an action plan for you to help you plan what to do for this child to help them to reach those milestones. It will come up with kind of this to-do list of different things you can do. You can mark when you've done them and when the child can do them. And this is just so helpful because it takes so much pressure off practitioners. We know what the targets are and we have an action plan for them. It's just fantastic to have something like this to make the practitioner's job so much easier and also make sure that all practitioners are kind of singing from the same hymn sheet, so to speak. So Child Paths makes recording observations much easier and sharing them with parents really simple, but also helps with providing next steps or coming up with what targets children need. And if children are really not meeting the milestones that we might expect, comes up with an action plan for them. So we have our three statutory assessments, the two year check, the reception baseline assessment, and the early years foundation stage profile. And we have observations that are going on throughout a child's early years journey. In the Development Matters document, which is a non-statutory document that practitioners can use alongside the Early Years Foundation Stage framework, there are checkpoints within each area of learning. So at age three, can the child X, Y, Z? And so practitioners can also use these checkpoints throughout the child's early years journey to assess and see if they are at the expected level of development. We also have another non-statutory document I will mention called Birth to Five Matters. This document is also non-statutory, but it does have a lot of information about child development and what we can expect from children at certain ages and stages. And so a lot of practitioners do use that for their ongoing assessment as well. And there may be other assessments that particular practitioners decide to do in their own setting. But the ones I've mentioned are the main assessments that we will come across in the Early Years Foundation stage. If you got this far in the video, please write below either your favourite year group to teach if you're a teacher or your favourite year group when you were at school. So it might have been when you were in nursery, when you were two years old, or it might have been when you were in year 10. Who knows? Let me know in the comments down below. Thank you so much to Child Paths for sponsoring this video. I will put all of the information about how you can find out more about Child Paths in the description down below. Thank you very much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and give this video a thumbs up and I will see you next time.